So Pong 6 was a little bit on the simpler side. All we did was add a string to the top left that measured our FPS. So nice to have if you want to measure how well your game is running on a particular system. Um, not particularly sophisticated, but it was a nice little reprieve. Pong 7 is a little bit meatier in that now we're going to get a little bit of more interesting functionality in our game with collision detection. Now, again, you can't really see it in this slide, um, but we're going. what we're going to do is have it such that the ball can move and collide not only with the paddles, but also with the up and down um, edges of the screen. And what I realized in the last section, we didn't actually implement title, so we're going to do that in this section as well. So in order to get to that, we need to talk about how to actually collide to rectangles together. Unfortunately, it's pretty easy in the context of um, what are called axis aligned bounding boxes. And that just means that we have rectangles on our screen that are aligned, you know, not rotated at all to our X or our Y and our X axes in our coordinate system. And in order to test whether two rectangles are colliding, we really just need to really test to see whether or not they're you know, one edge of another is not touching or beyond the edge, uh, the opposite edge of the other rectangle. And to illustrate this, I have a slide here that sort of shows two rectangles that are colliding. Whoops. And you can see that, for example, this side here is within this side. It's to the left of that side. Um, but it suffices if we if we do a check on each edge of the rectangle. So, for example, this edge here, this little this left edge of this right rectangle. If we know that it's to the right of this edge, well, then there can't be a collision no matter what. It's just impossible for that to happen. Same thing if this edge is above this edge. In other words, if the opposite edges are disjointed, then there's no collision. It's not possible. So if you do a check for each of the four edges by virtue of that, the simplicity of that, then you're guaranteed to not have a collision. And that's what that's how you do a simple axis aligned bounding box collision. And that's really all of the sort of a mental framework we'll establish before we get into it. And let's just actually implement that code. So I'm going to go here into my distro. And what I want to do is I want to have a function in the ball class that will actually check to see whether it's colliding with some other entity, which we assume is going to have an x, y, a width, and a height. In this case, there'll be our paddles. And we'll check to see whether the ball collides with paddle one and paddle two. We'll do that from main. But we need to actually have the function that does that. So I'm just going to say it's going to be a function called collide. It's going to return a Boolean. And it's going to take, let's just say, box as our argument here. And what we can do is do, as I just described, check to see whether or not the edge of our ball is disjointed from the opposite edge. In other words, if it's the right edge, see if it's to or it's the left edge, check to see whether it's to the right of the right edge of the other box. If it is, well, then it's an impossible um, collision. So we'll just say um, if self.x is greater than box.x plus box.width, because you have to take, remember, everything is relative to its top left corner. The x is relative to the top left. So we want to add the width to check to see whether our x is our left side, basically, is to the right of the other box, if it's greater than the other box's right edge. So if it's greater than the box.x or uh, plus the box.width or our self.x plus self.width uh, is less than the box.x, then return false. So it doesn't collide. It's an impossibility. And likewise for y. So if self.y is greater than box.y plus box.height, or self.y uh, plus self.height is less than the box.y, then return false. Otherwise, we can return true. And we can put that all into one if statement as well. It's just a little bit more readable in this particular instance. But this collides function should get us as far as we need to go. Now we'll return to main. And here, sort of in the update function is where we really want to test this. So I can just add some code here that just says, if uh, ball collides with paddle one, let's say, then I want to do something here. I want to um, deflect the ball to the, that's on the left. So we're going to say we're going to deflect the ball to the right. And if ball collides with paddle two, then I want to deflect the ball to the left. So in order to do that, so we know that things move with an x and a y velocity. The ball, if it's going towards paddle one, or which which is there for you, if it's going towards paddle one, it has an x velocity 
of negative 100 in this case. So we want to change that to positive 100. So to do that, all we have to do is just say um, ball dot dx is equal to negative ball dot dx, ball dot dx. And actually this works either way. So we can say like that. So it's just going to reflect the ball either way. And really the, it, it, we can do this the, the same, uh, this exact line of code actually applies um, in both ways. Now what we can do as well, if the ball collides, what we want to do is not only deflect it back towards the right, but also keep the y velocity going the same way, which is really already going to happen by virtue of it uh, already having, so let's say if it's going up, it's going to have a negative y velocity. So by shifting it back towards the other direction, that y velocity will be maintained. So actually we don't need to change the y velocity at all, though the, the dx is all that needs to be flipped essentially. So not only do we need to worry about the balls, but we should also worry about the top and bottom of the screen. So those, that's a little bit of a different case. Um, since there's nothing really moving, we don't have to worry about anything like that. We can just literally take the y value and be concerned about that. So let's just say if ball.y is less than or equal to zero, which will be at the top of the screen, then I want to deflect the ball down. Well, to do that, all we have to do is just say ball.dy is equal to negative ball.dy. Simple as that. And if the ball.y uh, is greater than or equal to virtual height minus four, because remember, the ball is four pixels tall, so we want to account for that by offsetting where it's checking for the collision by four pixels up, then ball.dy is equal to negative ball.dy. And in addition, it's possible that the ball might move actually a little bit up above zero. And so by setting the velocity, we don't really account for sort of putting it back into play. For example, we, between one frame and another, we might move a few pixels above the edge. And, and so therefore see the ball sort of go above the top edge of the screen. Um, what we want to do is reset the ball back down into the play field as soon as it hits that collision. So what we can do is we can say ball.y is equal to zero in the case of it hitting the top of the screen. We can then say here, ball.y is equal to virtual height minus four in the case that it hits the bottom edge of the screen. So let's go ahead and test this out really quickly. Um, local box is a nil value, ball 31. Let me go ahead and see where I have that. So box.y, function ball collides, box.y, box.width. So we are taking in a box. So let's go over back to main. Ball collides, paddle one, paddle two. And we are, in, we do indeed have the collides function here, unless I am just missing something completely wrong. Let me just run this one more time. Oh, it's getting past a nil value. Okay, so that means that uh, in here in our code, we're actually giving it a nil value. So ball collides with paddle one and paddle two. Let me just make sure. Oh, because it's player one and player two. My bad. Okay, apologize for that. So let's go ahead and set that to player one and player two, not paddle one and paddle two. That is my mistake. Let's rerun that. And we do indeed, we see white here. So again, I have a love.graphics.clear call that needs to be corrected just down here. So let's divide that by 255, divide by 255, divide by 255 and divide by 255, we'll fix that, save it, run it, and let's test it. So I'm gonna, let's see if it bounces. Oh, it bounced off the top. Let's see if it bounces off the bottom, bounced off the bottom, and lastly, bounced off the paddle. Okay, perfect. So everything works really well, minus the little graphical issue there. So that is collision detection, it's that simple. Just check to see whether one edge is sort of to the opposite side of the opposite edge. So in, or in other words, make sure the left edge is to the right of the right edge and so on and so forth. And just, you know, because of geometric space, it ends up being that that ensures, assuming there's no rotation on our, on our um, rectangles, that things have or have not collided. And it's a very simple, easy calculation to add. So that was it for this update. In the next update, we're gonna take a look at actually detecting whether the ball goes past the left or the right edge, which we haven't actually done yet. And if we kept playing, we would see the ball keep going forever into that edge. Um, and so in the next update, we're going to look at adding a score when you know it gets past the left side or the right side, and then um, move towards the end of actually creating a win condition. So we'll see you then in Pong 8.